Here is the Celestron 114 LCM computerized telescope. In this video, I'm going to be sharing with you my personal review based on my experience with it. So, if you are in the market for a new telescope, or even considering this particular option, stick around because this may be the perfect fit for you. I want to begin by quickly walking you through the specification of this telescope and how it is designed, as this dictates how you use it and ultimately what you're able to see. So as previously alluded to, this is a computerized telescope, meaning it comes with an automated mount. Let me show you that now, which is here. And this is the hand control to essentially operate the mount. Meaning that you are able to automatically track celestial objects. In other words, this telescope orients itself with the night sky and helps you find and follow objects without having to manually track them, which is the case with some other telescope types. Just bear that in mind. Note, you do need to go through a process called polar alignment first. The good news is, it doesn't, it's not too difficult and it only takes a couple of minutes. So on to the specifications itself. Well, when buying a telescope, you should consider the main specs. Aperture size for light gathering power, focal length for magnification potential, and the included accessories like eyepieces and finoscopes, which will allow for enhanced viewing experiences. So for this particular telescope, the aperture is 114, as you can see here, 114 millimeters that is, which equates to around four and a half inches, a focal length of a thousand millimeters, or just shy of 40 inches, and you also get a 25 millimeter eyepiece and a nine millimeter eyepiece. Now, the 25 millimeter eyepiece gives you a wider field of view, or you can see more of the sky at once, and then the nine millimeter is for that increased magnification. So this spec is what you need to compare against any other telescope that you may be considering. Now, in terms of this spec itself, it is considered good, you know, good a good entry point for astronomy. Now, let's. I want to walk you through the pros of this telescope and what I personally like about it. Firstly, the ease of setup. So one of the biggest advantages of the 114 LCM is how quick and easy it is to set up. It takes about five to 10 minutes, depending on your experience, um, but it's very, very simple. You also get a manual which walks you through the entire process. Not difficult at all. Secondly, the general ease of use. I love that about this telescope. So being computerized and with the Skyline technology, you can quickly align the telescope in minutes by essentially what you need to do is you need to center three bright objects in your telescope's eyepiece. The LCM then calculates the time, date and location to orient itself with the night sky. So that, that process is, I really like that. I think it's very easy to use, especially if you haven't got any experience with identifying objects in the night sky or using a manual telescope. On that point, the automatic object locating is fantastic and you can browse the hand controls database to select any star, planet, galaxy or nebula that you want to observe. So you just literally use this. It's very, very easy to do. If you're not quite sure what to observe, you can also, there's a sky tour button, which I probably should have shown you, which enables you to essentially see the best objects that are currently visible. So, you, you know, you focus your observations. You're not kind of just hoping. You, can, you, you know exactly what is available to you and you can go from there. I also love how portable this telescope is. It is it's quite light. Um, obviously, you've got one hand here and I'm picking that up. Um, so it's, it's, it's very portable. It's not too big, as you can see. So there's my hand here in, for, for comparative purposes. It's not too big, it's not too heavy. So it's really, really portable uh, and great to transport. It's great to just, you know, take inside or then, you know, get out of an evening. I really like that about it. Um, one thing I would say, I'll talk about that in the cons actually. Um, and in terms of its price, it for being a computerized telescope, it is actually quite affordable. Um, so it's a really good entry point, especially if you haven't had a computerized telescope before, or perhaps you haven't, you haven't got a telescope already. You know, it's not too much of an investment up front. So what are the cons of this telescope? Of course, no telescope is perfect. So I do just want to mention some of the cons of this. First is collimation. So as it's a Newtonian reflector, do consider that you may need to go through a process called collimation 
basically it's the alignment of its two mirrors okay now it's relatively it's a relatively short and easy process but it is something you may need to do so bear that in mind okay because otherwise your viewing experience will be you know massively impacted in fact you won't be able to pretty much use it so that's something to, to bear in mind also because it's computerized it's you know it operates via batteries so i'll show you this it's in this section it's in this little bit here i don't know if i'm able to get it off with one hand but you know you need batteries to operate it's eight double a batteries which you know can get expensive expensive if you're using those time and time again so um you know you can drain them quite quickly so i recommend investing in a good set of rechargeable batteries or better still celestron do uh, provide a recharge well they offer a rechargeable power pack but that does come at an additional cost so just bear that in mind okay um, the other thing which I don't quite like about this telescope is its limited deep sky performance. So while it's great for planets and the moon, which I'll touch upon in a second, it does struggle with deep, uh, faint deep sky objects, especially in light polluted areas. So there are limitations on what you can see. Then there is um, the, the tripod. This is, it's not really a problem for me because I'm not that tall, but the tripod that comes with it is quite short. So. Um, you know you may need to bend over it depends how, how tall you are essentially um, but there is that I mean it's quite a windy day today a lot of people talk about the stability of the mount being an issue but I've got a flat surface here I've got no problems with that I've not noticed any issues but some people do mention that the stability of the mount is an issue so what can you see with the telescope I've touched on it brief briefly um, but the main thing you'll be able to see with this telescope is the moon Look, that is where this telescope can kind of uh, really deliver it looks really, really good through the 114 LCM. You can see craters, surface details. Um, the only thing I would say is, you know, that isn't the biggest feat for most telescopes. You know, most telescopes will be able to show you the moon, but this is great for the moon nevertheless. In terms of planets, Jupiter. So you can see the moons as kind of fuzzy star-like points. You can see the cloud belts, but they do lack a little bit of contrast. The great red spot is uh, probably out of reach. I've not been able to see it through the telescope myself. Saturn's rings are visible, and obviously Saturn itself, but the Cassini division and cloud bands are difficult to discern. Uh, and its moons are also quite hard to spot. It does require the right seeing conditions, a bit of practice as well. Venus, so you can see that, and its phases, relatively easy to see. Mercury does appear as a small smeared disk. It's not, you're not getting the best views of uh, Mercury with this telescope. And then Mars, it's a bit of a fuzzy orange ball and you don't really see much detail, but you can see it nevertheless. Deep sky objects, as I've mentioned, you can explore some of the brighter deep sky objects like the Orion Nebula, the Andromeda Galaxy, and dust lanes in M82, but don't expect fine details of deep sky objects. This certainly is out of reach for this telescope. It's not what it was designed for. It's not a deep sky object telescope, and that is reflective in the price. And also, you know, its general size, portability. It's obviously a bit of a... Uh, uh, it's a trade-off really in terms of telescope size and cost so who do i think this telescope would be best for firstly beginners if you're just starting out in astronomy this telescope ease of use and computerized features do make it a great choice if you're a casual observer um, and you don't really want to use your telescope too often or too much i think it's great for you as well um, you know you don't need to spend a fortune on it and therefore um, you won't feel the pressure to use it all the time and then lastly, families. So if you've got young kids, this is a great option for you as well, particularly if you just want to get them interested in astronomy. So there you have it, my review of the Celestron 114 LCM computerized telescope. If you found this video useful, maybe hit the like button and hit the subscribe button as I'm gonna be releasing lots of other uh, astronomy related uh, gear reviews and content as well. If you have any questions or comments about the Celestron 114 LCM, drop them down below and I'll help you out as best I can. And with that said, over to you, all the best, and I hope you have an excellent day.